going out. This first song we're going to do is when the Spirit of the Lord, you know, sometimes when the Spirit of the Lord comes on you, sometimes you sing like the song says, sometimes you dance like the song says, and sometimes you pray like the song says. But the best part, when you get the quivers, that little thing in there, that's the best part, isn't it? When the Spirit of the Lord moves upon my heart, I will sing like David sang. When the Spirit of the Lord moves upon my heart, I will sing like David sang. I will sing like Yeah. 
there's this zeal that we can't contain. That no matter what needs to be done, real Jason, we're all about it. God, do you want me to knock on doors? I'll do it. Pastor, you want me to worship? I'm going to worship. I want to get in somewhere along the way. I'll do it. From the top all the way down, sometimes we get discouraged and we lose that zeal. So I ask the Lord to reveal to me how do I keep that excitement? How do I keep that zeal? I, I, I sat there and I started reading my Bible. I got to John chapter 4. Anybody that knows the Bible knows that in John chapter 4, Jesus tells a woman at the well, that the water that I give thee, you'll drink and you'll never thirst again. That means we're not thirsty anymore. We don't have a desire for anything in this world anymore. we got to keep that desire. But before I get to where I'm going, this is high stuff. And we still have a desire. And we still want that sin. And we still want that excitement. And then she just a conversation. She says, I perceive that you be a prophet. She says, our fathers worshiped you on the mountain. Her heart. Knowing she can receive something, she'll never thirst for anything again. Turns to worship. Yeah. That's the key to keeping the zeal. That's the key to keeping the excitement. It's worship. Worship it when I don't feel like it. Worship it when I don't feel like it. Because if we're honest, sometimes we go to church and the farm is safe from our mind. It's worship it in. Sometimes I don't feel like singing the song of the JDC. Let's worship it in. It doesn't matter if it's fast or slow. Let's worship. Because if we can worship, that excitement will change. That zeal will change. So don't go back to worship the only one worship. If we're going to change this community, we've got to be worshiping the great church.
Jesus. If he is your Lord, if he has filled you with the Holy Ghost, don't you think he's just a little bit worthy of all the praise? Amen. Don't you think he's a little bit worthy? He may be tired of our bodies, but he is worthy of everything.
Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. I believe that the Lord has something great for us this evening. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. I believe that there's going to be some people that leave this place changed. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I already feel changed. I already feel better than what I did when I walked in. Hallelujah. Oh, my God, my God, hallelujah. Oh, I love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, I worship the mighty name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let's just, do y'all feel just like worship you just a little bit more? Amen. Just a little bit more. Let's just, oh, hallelujah. You got something else? Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. We're getting ready to sing a song that, that in my opinion, in the last 10 years has been sung in church a lot. <laughs> And, and, and I gotta be honest, when we first said we were gonna sing it, I said, pick any song but that one. And uh, Jesus had to, had to correct me and let me know that it's his worship, not mine. And, uh, and, and I got to thinking about this song, and this song was inspired by a story in the book of Acts. We're gonna sing Shape the Foundation. Amen. The book of Acts tells us about Paul and Silas in prison. They've been beaten, they're bound, they've been beaten almost to death. And the Bible says, and at midnight, Paul and Silas, Pastor talked about chemistry this morning. There are some things that we just can't remove. It says at midnight they prayed and they sang praises. I believe we've prayed. I believe we've worshipped. But if we're going to do this, let's worship. that was in the Bible is the same God that's today. That's right. And in those days, you know, he, the devil could put the disciples in prison and stop the church or so he thought. But in today's day, he's, he's evolved. I hate to say it, but he's good at what he does. He finds a way to get the church in prison and he is. He gets us in prison in our minds. And, and, and I'd like to say, Pastor, we're immune to it. We don't go through these things. But, but sometimes we get so bound in our mind that we think we can't worship anymore. We'll never overcome the trial. We'll, we'll never overcome the depression. But I still believe that I can pray and worship. The ground will shake tonight. So I, I, I want to encourage you. I know we worship and we might be tired. But let's push through it a little bit. Come in, stand by and get up and worship with us.
next weekend at the Fall Festival. Uh, my wife needs donations uh, still, and we don't need a lot, but anybody that can help, just see that and give her the money tonight at the church if at all possible. Uh, but we still need some help with the funds to, uh, to uh, buy the supplies that we need. And uh, so anybody that can help, please see my wife after church. Amen. Amen. Uh, Monday, September the 1st is Labor Day picnic at the park. Where everybody wants to come, we're going to have a great time. It's going to be volleyball, bean bags. And uh, see Sister Crystal for details. September 27th, we're planning a trip to Lambert's. So anybody who wants to go and enjoy great food and fellowship, amen, we're going to plan that. Also, they put it up on the board, the district, the Great Lakes District of the ALJC here in Illinois has asked our church to host a fellowship rally. And that is going to be on November the 8th. And so we're looking forward to that. We're going to have a lot of friends and people that's going to come and we're going to get together for some good fellowship and a great service in the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. Sunday morning, we will meet here at 930. And we'll take our offering, make our announcements, pray for those who need prayer. And then we're all going to go to a group, as a group up to the park for the 10 o'clock community service. Amen. Our ladies are going to sing, and I'm one of the speakers, so just pray that I'll have the right words. And I know what I want to say. Oh, I've got some things I want to say. I want to say repent. And be baptized. Every one of you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. For the remission of your sins. And you shall receive the baptism. I would love to see a Holy Ghost outpouring on that community service.
Watch this is what he's saying here. But it shall be given to them for whom it is prepared. And when the ten heard it, they began to be less displeased with James and John. But Jesus called to them to him and said it, saith unto them, You know not, you know that they which are uh, account, accounted to rule over the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and they great and the great ones exercise authority upon them. But so shall it not be among you, but whosoever will be great among you shall be your minister. And whosoever of you will be the chiefest shall be servant of all. For even the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister, and to give his life a ransom for many. I'm going to talk to you tonight, and I'll give you the title just a little bit, so you may be seated. Several weeks ago, the Lord spoke to us through the gifts of, of tongues, interpretation. He said, I have the hearts. You remember that? I have the hearts. It's yours. I'm ready to give it to you. But I'm waiting on you. And ever since he did that, it's just troubled me. And it's just, it's, it's basically driving me nuts. Because I pray and I'm seeking God. I'm saying, Lord, that what are we not doing? What is it, Lord, that you are waiting for? We, we come to church. We worship. We worship your name. We praise you. We sing praises unto you. We, we lift up your name, Lord. We, we're not ashamed to tell people that how good you are. We're not ashamed, Lord, of what you've done for us. And we tell people everywhere we go, you need to come and visit our church because God is doing great things there. We, we get together and we, we plan and we think and we strategize. And, and, and when we get together, we, we try and figure out what can we do. Maybe we can do this or maybe we can do that. And again, they're all good ideas. I don't think it's fair to say any idea is not good. But but then we, we try and figure out the logic of it and so forth. And, and you know what? You can you can get so logical you can talk yourself out of anything. But yet the Lord kept dealing with me and I kept praying. And so the question that I would like to ask tonight is, and, and the Lord spoke this to me, and we can ask the question, are you as close to God as you want to be? Now, nobody with any sense is going to say yes. Anybody that's really, truly honest will say, I'm not as close to God as I want to be. Anybody? Now, can we get a witness here? Come on. But the statement that God spoke to me so strong on the road the other night, I was on my way to Indianapolis. I was filled with the Holy Ghost. I mean, the anointing was still on me on the way to India Wednesday night. I get to Terre Haute. There's a two-hour delay trying to get through town because of a big car pileup. And so I was trying to get through, and I just began to talk to the Lord. And the Lord, I felt like the Lord spoke to me. And he said, the question should not be, are you as close to me as you want to be? But the statement needs to be, we are as close to God as we want. moving in here right now. You may not be jumping and shouting, but the Holy Ghost is moving. Yes. Because the statement is true. We are as close to God as we want to be. Oh, we get up and we say, Lord, I want, I want a closer walk with you. Lord, I want to get close to you. And we'll pray and say, Lord, I, I, want, I want the gifts to operate in my life. And I want the power in my life. I want more anointing. Can I get a witness here? I want more anointing in my life. I want to be used, oh God. And the Lord spoke to me and said, you want my stuff. That's it. Mm. You want my power. You want my stuff. You want the anointing. You want the, you want the glory. But I'm asking you, do you really want me? And the key is this, and I believe I'm so in tune with the Holy Ghost tonight. 
because we prayed for revival and we prayed for the glory and we prayed for all this and the Lord said those things will come automatically the closer you get to me he said it's not enough to seek for my stuff it's not enough to seek my power that's not what you'll be seeking if you'll seek my face which is my character and my love then those things will happen
I made preachers mad at me. I got an entire organization kicked off at me. I had people tell me, you can't do that. There's a problem, sir. I love it. What are you going to do with it? I'm going to do whatever I got to do. I'm going to go be with her. I live four hours away. You thought I lived across the street. Because I didn't care what people thought. I didn't care what people said. I finally got with her and we talked one night and said, are we going to make a go of this? She said, let's do it. I said, then shut up all the voices around us. Because if you and I ain't got enough Holy Ghost to figure out what the will of God for our life is, we're in trouble anyhow. Right. And God has blessed us. And God has anointed us. Yes. And we're here by the will of God. Amen. But I made that, I told that to tell you this. When are we going to get the same spirit and the same attitude? I don't care what people say. I've got to get to Jesus. I don't care what the organization says. I've got to get to Jesus. I don't care what somebody else is going to say. I've got to get to Jesus. And I don't care if somebody doesn't like it. I've got to get to Jesus because I love him. I love him. I love him. And if you're ashamed to stand up and say, I love Jesus, you haven't met him yet. Because when you get to his presence, you're going to say, I love him. Yet my desire says, no, 
I want more of Jesus, but somehow, Lord, my actions prove different. My lips say something, my, my actions can't back up. I say I want more of Jesus, but I'm not willing. And Jesus told the disciples, that's not for me to give unless you're willing to drink of the cup that I drink of, unless you're willing to sacrifice the what I've sacrificed, unless you're willing to go through what I'm going to go through. And you can't get to where you want. You want a closer walk with God? You know what to do, but you won't drink the cup. I know what to do, but I won't drink the cup. You know what to do, but you won't drink the cup. And the cup is on the altar. say no. Say, but Brother Briggs, I drank the cup. Yeah, I know. I drank the cup too. The cup represents suffering. The cup represents sacrifice for God. Not about because of you, because of Him. If you want an anointing, you're going to have to go through a time of suffering and sacrifice or you're not going to get it. But the bottom line is if I want the relationship with Jesus that I'm talking about, i got to find the cup, Brother Cody. And i got to say, let me drink in that cup. i got to be willing to be baptized the baptism. One of them is the foxes have holes. The birds have their nests. But the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Jesus was tempted in all points like as we are. And he didn't get caught up in the cares of this world. But he did what he had to do to bring about redemption for you. And to bring redemption to my house. And here I stand and I go Go from serving. 
fruitfulness, the friendship, I'm son. So when I'm a girl, don't get caught up in that. Paul said we're neither male nor female, bond or free. We're of humanity, and he died for us, and that makes us his son. The church is his bride. That doesn't always make me feel comfortable either, but don't get caught up in the terminology. But bottom line is, he's my father. Right now, I wish I could take my son who's outside the church, my daughter. I wish I could hold him again like I did when they were kids. Because I love them so much. And they're in sin. And they're doing things they shouldn't do, Sister Wills. And they're living a lifestyle that is not pleasing. In fact, it's hard not to be ashamed sometimes of the things they've done and they do. But right now, and my daughter called me. Said, Dad, I need help. I don't care what she's done. I don't care where she's been. I don't care what she's involved in. As a dad, I would do everything in my power to help her. How much more is our Heavenly Father here right now? He doesn't care where you've been. He doesn't care what you've been involved in. He doesn't care what you've done or where you've been. As a father, he said, ask, and I'll come. Hallelujah. The altar is open. You're as close to God as you want to be. You're as close to God as you want to be. Hallelujah.
They make choices to change them. And that's where we are tonight. There's some people here. God's been good to you. You love God. You come to church. You're faithful. But if you want to get to where I'm talking about, you're the only one that can do that. You're the only one that can do that. Hallelujah. I have to give just a few short announcements. Tomorrow night's Bible study, or tomorrow night's prayer meeting, excuse me. Wednesday night's Bible study. We do have some people that desperately need prayer. We need to pray for Debbie, that the Lord will strengthen her. She's looking at quite a lengthy uh, time to recover. And she misses being here and we miss her. So let's pray for Sister Debbie. Sister Gladys is still in the hospital. She's still struggling with following the other day. She has uh, another situation that they're looking into. So she needs prayer. Corky needs prayer. And those are those. Um, thank you for your prayers for my daughter. She's doing very well. She'll come out of surgery okay. And it uh, looks like she's going to be fine. My mother has an aneurysm the size of a softball. She has to go to the heart doctor tomorrow. I may have to go back to Indianapolis. So just pray for my mom. Pray for my uncle, Uncle Bob. He has been a faithful servant of God his entire life. And he's had to have two foot surgeries on the one foot, and he's going to have surgery on the other foot. He's only been able to, he goes to Calvin Tabernacle over the Moody Church. He's only been able to go to church four or five times in the last year. He's, he, he just, he's not discouraged because he has tremendous faith in God. But that's tough. And so I'm taking a stack of RCDs and uh, going to tell him about. But the thing that struck me, and I don't want to bash another church, but for whatever reason, they haven't requested prayer from Uncle Bob. And my aunt said, call Rick, his church will pray. I thank you. That they have that kind of confidence in this church. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. So let's stand tonight. Praise God, brother. Carl, come up here with the offering plate. accepting our worship. Thank you, Lord, for touching our hearts. And forgive us, Lord, for becoming complacent. Forgive us for becoming so satisfied with where we are. But God, I pray tonight that you'll put a desire in our hearts that every person here tonight will have a desire to get closer to you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Let's worship the Lord as we give unto the Lord.
Lord, I praise your name. 